All right, so I've already published a few videos covering Adobe's generative AI technology. And today, with the latest version of Photoshop beta that they just released, there's a new but not exactly new feature that they're calling generative expand. And it's clear that Adobe is looking at the way that we are using its generative fill technology to work on our images. And this generative expand simplifies a process uh, that usually took a few steps, but now takes like two steps. And it's actually really good. So I wanna show that to you right now. Now, really quickly, I've gotten a few comments and emails from some users who say that after they've installed uh, Photoshop beta, their image is now open by default in Photoshop beta and they don't want that. They want them to open in whichever app they prefer. So I'm gonna show you really quickly on the Mac how to do that. On Windows, I apologize, I don't have Windows, but I'm sure there's a way to do that too. What you'll wanna do is you'll go to the file format that is opening in Photoshop beta. In this case here, we've got JPEGs, but it can be a TIFF, it can be a DNG. And so here we'll go with uh, the JPEG image. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna go to get info. Now, you'll want to go to this open with section here in this property window. And you'll see here that it's saying that JPEGs open with Adobe Photoshop beta. And I don't want that. I want my images or my JPEGs to open in preview, which is a native Mac OS app. And here's the important part. You don't just want to click preview here because that'll just open this file in preview. You want all JPEGs to open in preview. So click on this change all button. It's gonna confirm that you're gonna open all JPEGs in preview and there you go. So just a quick little thing that I wanted to show you. And so let's now move on to Photoshop beta. All right, so generative expand is pretty self-explanatory and I'll show you that in a second. And it's something that we were able to do before, except before we had to use the crop tool to expand the canvas and then use the marquee tool to make selections around the image and make sure that part of the original image is selected. And then we would use generative fill. Here, this is now streamlined. So I'm gonna use this first example here to show you what I mean. Let's say I want to convert this image here to a square image because I wanna share it on Instagram. But if I were to just use a crop tool here, which is the first thing you'll want to do, you'll click on the crop tool and then change my ratio to one to one, which is square, before generative technology existed, I would pretty much be limited to this. Here is my square and that's what I could do. But like I said, I want to have a little bit more breathing room on either side of the barn. And I also wanna have the top of the mountains in the frame. So what I'll do is I'm gonna take the top bumper bar and because I have the one-to-one -one aspect ratio selected, my crop box will always stay at that one-to-one -one aspect ratio. So now I have this crop box here. And before what I'd have to do is commit this crop box. And like I said, I would have to use the marquee tool to make a selection on the right, make a selection on the left, and then click on generate. So here we've simplified it. The first thing you'll want to make sure though, is that you under this fill dropdown, you select generative expand, and that's it. All you have to do is click on the check mark here to commit the crop and to have generative expand apply to the photo. Now I'm gonna cut the processing time because no one needs to see that, but generally for me on my M2 Max, uh, MacBook Pro, this takes about seven to eight seconds. So let's go ahead and click on the check mark, and there we go. We now have our larger square image. And it actually does a really good job. Like this looks seamless, doesn't it? I've got these mountain tops over here. I've got the wooden fence expanded here and the grass is expanded as well. Now, there is always a caveat, or at least currently there's a caveat because there is a 1024 pixel on the long end limit. Anytime you start to expand beyond that, it's gonna kind of stretch the pixels. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we zoom in, you can see here that seam. So we have this kind of sharper resolution. And again, this is a lower resolution JPEG. So keep that in mind. But where we start to expand, you can see that it's lower resolution. Now there are ways to get around this by making incremental expansions of 1024 pixels. But here's the thing, let's zoom out. This is about the size that someone's gonna be viewing the image, let's say on their phone. So I'm not really worried about it. Again, this is just kind of something that I want to share on social media, even if it was a little bit larger. I mean, people are not gonna notice it. 
for this purpose. I would not necessarily use this to make a large scale print, but for my purposes, like I said, I just want to share this on Instagram. This will be great. And again, every time you apply generative expand or some sort of generative fill task, you're going to get three variations here. So here, that's the first option. This is the second option. Third option is also great, actually. I mean, these are both really good. And of course, if these three options, if none of them work for you, you can just click on generate again, and that'll generate another three options for you to choose from. I also recommend if you're using generative fill technology to give Adobe signals when they do something good. And the easiest way to do that is over here on this floating contextual bar, there is a good or bad result. And so it doesn't have to just be good. It can be bad too. Um, I go ahead and I click on that thumbs up. And I, I just, I feel like what they're doing with this generative fill technology is really awesome. And it's a small way to give them a signal that what they're doing is going in the right direction for you. All right, so I've got one more example here and same basic principle except a different use case. In this photo here, you can see that I composed the waterfall on the right third of the frame. But now I actually want to have a wider aspect ratio and I want the waterfall to be more in the center of the frame. Now I can recrop this, but I will lose a lot of my original composition. So I don't want that. I, I want to actually expand the composition. So here's how I'll do that. First, I'll zoom out a little bit and then I'm gonna to go to the crop tool. And I wanna make sure that I have the 16 by nine aspect ratio selected because that is the kind of wider aspect ratio that I want. Then what I'll do is I'll expand my aspect ratio here and I'll move the image kind of right around there so that the waterfall is more in the middle. And of course I can make it a taller or constrict it, but here I just kind of wanna bring it to the right. Just like before, make sure that generative expand is selected and then click on the check mark. And so here we go. We've got our expanded canvas and I can click on these different options here to see if there is one that suits my needs. If I don't like any of them, again, I can click on generate and then I've got three other options here. Actually, this one is perfect. Like this one looks great. Again, though, if you zoom in, you might notice a little bit of a decrease in resolution. And here, actually, it's not that bad because I don't think I increase the resolution by that much. And if I want, I can continue refining. Like if this is still not exactly in the center, I can go back to my crop tool here, expand it a little bit so that the waterfall is more in the center. And now I'll click on check to use generative expand to fill that in. And so there we go. I mean, this looks fantastic. And it actually looks really cool in this 16 by nine aspect ratio with the waterfall in the middle. It does kind of break the whole rule of thirds thing, but I think it really works well here. And again, this is not something that I would possibly be able to do unless I went back to the scene and took the photo again, which would be difficult to do because I currently live in Florida and this was taken on the complete opposite side of the country. All right, so that is the generative expand tool. Again, it's new, but not so new. And I appreciate that Adobe is looking at the ways that we are using generative fill technology and making the more popular things like this expanding canvas and filling more streamlined. So I hope it inspires you to continue trying out their generative AI technologies. I think it's amazing. And I've got these other videos here if you want to learn more about how to use generative fill in Photoshop. If you enjoy this video, thumbs up is always appreciated. And please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.